And I remember the day when I experienced Jesus. And nobody knew this, but my mother, she told me the day before, she says, now, Donnie, she says, I'm going to take, we're going to go to church tomorrow. And whatever you want the Lord to do for you, she says, I want you to get in the circle. And, and I didn't tell my mom what I wanted, but I was nine years old. And the Bible says, Jesus said, when I was a kid, I, I, I act like a kid. I thought as a kid. And so for me, you know, what is a kid going to want? I wanted a bike. I was seeing all the kids on the street. They were, they had bikes and I wanted a bike. And so I said to myself, I'm not going to tell anybody, but I wanted a bike. And so, uh, I went to prayer meeting with my mother. And I got in the circle, I'm the little bitty boy, and there were all these old women. And I got in the circle and I said, well, God, if you real, if you real. And I, I hear, you know, mama talking about it, but, you know, daddy, daddy tight, daddy tight. Mama didn't have it at the time. And so uh, and I don't know. All I knew was daddy and mama. So I wanted this bike and I was afraid to ask daddy for it because, you know, I just knew what the answer was going to be. Cause he was a hard man and he just wasn't going out, just get, get, giving you things like that. But for daddy, you had to earn it. And so I said, but you know, mama said that Jesus changed, he will, he can change things. And so I got in the middle of that circle and I said, God, if you real, I said, I want a huffy bike. As back then, that's what was in, in style. And I left the prayer meeting with my mother and I never told her I got in that circle and I didn't say a word the next day my dad came to me and he said son I'm gonna take y'all get you a bike now he didn't get my brother a bike he got me a bike and we went to the bike store whatever that store was I can't remember now what it was and he bought me a puffy bike and I said, my God, I, now I know that may seem small to you, but for me, it was the initiation. It was the beginning of an experience where I was being introduced to a Jesus that I did not know. This is the reason why when I have my grandbaby and, and you all may see little snippets of me and her being together, be, I, I have her with me and I talk about Jesus and I talk about the things of God with her, whether or not it makes sense or not. And, and I know that it's, it's much more difficult because she's not, she don't live in this house. She, she's living with her mother. So so she has to deal with me and if she goes home with her mom and whatever her mom is talking to her about or whatever the cares of the world that is on her. She is um, she she is um, influenced and she's dealing with that on a on a day to day basis. And I'm not saying that's bad. I'm not saying it's good, whatever it is. What I'm saying is, is that the time that I am spending in the life that I want to exhibit before her, I want her to one day as I look back on my mother, which is deceased. And my grandmother, which is deceased, and I look back on their lives and I'm not so much seeing them in their personal, their uh, uh, physical form, but I'm seeing them in their spiritual form. I saw faith. I remember one day when I was outside and I was playing in the back in the backyard and I was, you know, eight, nine, ten. All this stuff happened to me right around that time. And I fell and my wrist. You could look right here. I, I broke my wrist and my wrist was was cocked. You could see the break. And I went to the house. I was screaming. I went through the back door and I, I told my mom I was I was hurting and I had to go. I wanted to go to the hospital because I'm just messed up. My, my wrist was broke and my mom grabbed my arm. She grabbed my wrist and she put her on her hand around my wrist like I got my hand around my wrist right now. She squeezed it and she pulled not hard. It was like a rubbing. She just pulled her hand off of it. And when she pulled her hand off of it, this was the faith that she exhibited. She says, now go back and play. My hand was straight. The pain was gone. See, y'all think that's crazy. But see, I saw God. I witnessed it. 
I witnessed, I experienced God bits and pieces of God at an early age. We're not, we don't see that today. So, so Jesus is saying to them, he says, you're going to be witnesses of my power, of my power. And so what I'm saying today, church, is that we have got to get back to the place where we are demonstrators. The Bible says that signs and wonders will follow the unbeliever. The unbeliever. We are living in a time now, y'all. Let me tell you, people do not believe. Not only do people that are unbelievers that are not Christians, they don't believe, but Christians don't believe. They say they believe, but they really don't. And you can tell they really don't by the, the continuation of their life. You can see, you can watch it. That's the reason why I preference this by saying, by saying to you, um, uh, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? What are you willing to give up in order to have that? My grandmother used to say to my mother, she would call her sister. And, and, and it was about prayer. It was always conversations about prayer. And she says, sister, y'all take the day shift for prayer. Now this was, they would pray in shifts, shifts, like going to work. And, and, and she was so strong. Her mantle was, was so broad that she said, I will take a whole shift by myself. She would say, y'all, meaning you and the rest of, you know, the junior missionaries, y'all take the day shift. So y'all pray during the day. And I'm going to pray during the night. All night. What manner of woman is that? Now, now I grew up in this atmosphere. I saw it. I witnessed it. And ultimately, because of what they were emerged in, it came. It, it happened to me. It happened to me. I was showered. I was sprinkled. I became baptized in what they were made of. And so today, what I'm saying to God, because I'm at a juncture in my life where I'm saying, Lord, we, 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 we need more. We need more. We got to see you in a way that we have never, ever seen you before. And, and I'm not saying that, you know, that you got to go out and get hit by a car. You got to get shot, stabbed, all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that we need to see the power of God. We need to be able to walk into hospitals, walk into classrooms, walk to the steps of the White House and make a proclamation. We need to be able to speak those things that be not as though they were. If God made us in his image and in his likeness, that means who God is, we are. We are little gods on the earth exhibiting whatever is going on in heaven in the earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we are to mirror, mirror whatever God is doing in heaven. And so he says, let there be light, let there be. And so he is already getting ready to bring something forward out of him that is in the spiritual realm. But because he speaks his word, his word goes out and manifests it into a natural realm. And so now it becomes tangible or substantive or something that we can see. So now whatever you are going through, you should be able to exhibit the same thing demonstrate with power you should you should be able to speak a word and your word performs whatever it is that you send it to perform if you say listen be healed be delivered be set free 
then that's what it's going to do. It's going to heal, deliver, and it's going to set free. And if it does not, that means that you have not activated, you have not called deep enough into what God put on the inside of you, which is his image and his likeness. So therefore, what that means and what that is saying is that you are walking in a, in the soulless realm and in the fleshless realm the fleshly realm, because God made you a threefold man. The God that is in you or, or you, the person, that person, you, the spirit of you was with God before the creation of you came about. So he had you before he took the dirt, the substance, and he formed you and once he had you and he formed you, then he breathed into you and you became a living soul. Here's the issue. We are in between the flesh and the soul and we're not going deep enough to the God, the image and the likeness in us to call that forward to make a difference in the situation of whatever it is that we're going through to make a situ to make a difference in the earth. So I've been talking about faith. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance. So what was invisible now you're operating in, in it as if it was visible because you're calling it substance now. Is it substance? Is it something that I can touch? No, it's not. Now faith, faith is in the invisible, it's spiritual. But, but the scripture says in Hebrew, now faith is the substance. It's the substance. It becomes the stuff of things it is a substance of things hoped for hoped for something that i don't have to something that i want to have when god says uh let there be it became what he said it was because god is faith and so you use that same thing to create to create, we're supposed to be creating. So you form the word, you speak the word. And the word, be, it, is, it establishes a thing on the earth. So if you want to be healed, you want to be delivered, you want your bank account right, you want your family to straighten, to straighten up, you want your community, you want your, you want your, uh, uh, country. To be better. You want it to, you want the president, uh, you want the White House, the Senate, the, 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 uh, House, the Congress, all that, representatives, local, state. If you want all that to be different, you have to speak words in faith that is going to be transformative. That's the reason why we ain't where we need to be now is because those pillars that I saw when I was a little boy, they're not around. We got some that are still walking in faith. And as they walked in faith, as, as it was with uh, Peter and Paul. And, and, and they were they were so strong in the faith that even their shadow, when a shadow was cast on on people, their shadow made a difference. So faith, so, so strong in the faith that you could carry a, 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 some material, some cloth, a handkerchief. And 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 the spirit that was inside of you was so strong that it would get inside of the handkerchief and no longer did you need to be there. All you had to do was give a part of you to the situation and that would change it. God, I wish I could. I wish I could deal with this. That would change it. And so I'm not just talking to you, I'm talking to me as well to, to be strengthened to a different level 
Because now we we the church has to be uh, energized and empowered and revived to go about making a difference. Time is winding up. It's getting closer and we need to evangelize the world. Scripture says uh, Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up, John 12, 32, I think it is. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me like a magnet. Now, that was not being lifted, not just limited to being lifted up on the cross. It was all it was being lifted up, elevated into its right, his rightful place with the father. He says, if that happens, if I can go through this. He says, I'll draw. And, 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 and the enemy wants us to think that it was just words on a piece of paper. Because when you look at your family, when you look in, at your marriage, when you look at your children, when you look at your body, when you look at your bank account, when you look at the concerns and the cares of your life, when you look at your mental state, when you look at your loneliness, when you look at your yearning, when you look at everything that you feel that you lack, you desire, and, and it seems like God ain't in it. When you look at all that, it appears as if his being lifted up is, is, a, is null and void. But that's a lie. That's a lie. That's, a, that's the lie of the enemy. And the devil is the deceiver of the brethren. That's what that is. God wants to show himself strong in us today. Because I'm going to tell you, we this is the generation that they do not care about what you preaching about. Per se. They're going to be there. I'm going to come here you once. I'm going to come here you twice or maybe three times. Possibly by the grace, I might come here you four times. But if I don't start seeing changes in my life or changes in the lives of others, I'm gone. I'm going to bounce. And so that might mean that we're going to start seeing empty churches. If churches start to be emptied out, then the only way the churches will be refilled is with a, a new generation of Christians that are walking in authority and that are walking in power. You got to be so strong that you walk up to an alcoholic and to a drug addict and you say, what? I'm getting ready to spiritually slap the taste of alcohol and drugs out of your mouth without touching them. And say, be free, be healed, be delivered today. And it's gone. But then you got to go back to my message from last week. Wilt thou be made whole? Because after the healing, there's a continuation of do, do how bad do I want to be delivered and set free and walk in wholeness and in wellness? Totally, total health, spirit, mind and body. Because even though I may be able to deliver you, if you don't want to stay delivered, you won't stay delivered. My time is up. I am so grateful for you today. I hope I said something that is a blessing to you on this glorious morning. Remember, the worst is over. And the best is yet to come. Your quality of life is getting better and better and better. Believe that. And ye shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Be blessed on this day. Have a glorious day, a wonderful day, a magnificent day, a smiling day. In Jesus name. Amen.